All right, guys. So I've got a little bit of a presentation for everyone this morning. Um, but I do want to start by just taking a quick moment of silence to observe and reflect everything that's been going on as of recent um, to honor George Floyd and the countless others in the black community who have lost their lives. Um, so if you'll just join me for a quick moment of silence and then we'll get started. All right, thank you. So um, I do have a couple of polls today uh, that you can participate with either through your phone or via internet. And when those come up, you will see the link that is just here. And you also see how you can text in to participate. Um, it's just for a way to see and gauge, you know, where are you at with volunteering in your life? Some people are able to volunteer a lot, other people aren't. And don't feel bad if you can't, you know, I've just gotten to a point in my life where I can do a little more volunteering, but it's still difficult. So quick, quick more in-depth introduction of who I am. Um, I'm the event sales manager with Puckett's Grocery and Restaurant, and I actually serve both our Chattanooga location and our Pigeon Forge location. We've got other locations in the Middle Tennessee area. So if you're ever around, stop in and say hey, uh, either to myself or my team, we'd love to see you out. I am a grad from UTC, um, graduated in 2010, and I have my degree in outdoor recreation, which clearly not using. Um, I am a Chattanooga transplant. I was born and raised in Upper East Tennessee in the mountains and came to Chattanooga to get away from that small town life. I'm an outdoor enthusiast, like Austin had said. I love to paddleboard and I love to go hiking. Um, love to also go camping. Anything that I can do to be outdoors, I'm there in a heartbeat. You know, invite me for even a bonfire. Let's go. And then I'm also an avid Tennessee Vols fan. Go Vols. Been going to games since I was six months old. And as you can see in our pictures here, um, that's myself and my husband and our son, who is five. His name is Samuel. And then this is our dog. Her name is Baby Jesus. Yes, this child named her, no one else, and we go by baby. So we're actually going to start today with our first poll. And this is just a quick rundown. You know, how many times a year do you get to volunteer? Um, give everybody a couple minutes just to answer. You can type in your answers, send them over through either the link in the website or you can text over your answer. I cannot see who is sending in what. I just see the numbers that happen to pop up. And so what we're going to be discussing while people are hopefully submitting your answers is, you know, how can you use volunteering as an effective way to grow your brand, either your personal brand or your company's brand? Um, and you'll be hearing me say brand development and marketing interchangeably. Uh, we try to think, at least with my company, we try to think of marketing more as brand development than we do just a true marketing um, because we want people to become fans of Puckets. We love to treat everybody like family and uh, we want all of our family members to see us for what we stand for. And so I'll be going into a little more detail of how we can use volunteering for that. Awesome, whoever gets to volunteer five times or more a year, you are a saint. And I would love to be able to get to that point in my life. <laughs> Awesome, another two to three. And I'll be honest, guys, I fall somewhere between two to three, three to four. Um, depends on my work schedule, depends on how much I'm traveling between here and Pigeon Forge. 
really depends on, you know, what we've got going on as far as a family. All right, so we are gonna move to our next slide. There we go. So I'm not gonna beat in the importance of volunteering and the importance of marketing. We know why it's important to volunteer. You know, you're able to give back to your community. You're able to support those causes that are important to you or to your company. Um, it creates a stronger community by volunteering and uh, you're able to share your passion and also learn new things. You know, if you are, let's say, you know, you're an avid chess player and you decide to volunteer for for a chess team somewhere, to coach a chess team, you know, you're probably gonna learn some things you don't know. So volunteering is important in that aspect. And then when you take marketing and brand development, you know, they're important as far as they help your business grow and to gain new fans of whatever it is that you are representing. For us, we're representing a restaurant um, and we want, people to be fans of not just our food, but of the culture that we support. And it also exposes yourself, your company, the people within your company to your services and your products. Um, and you can see here, this is actually an event that we support through Puckets every year with the Northside Neighborhood House. Uh, it's their not so silent auction and if you've not had a chance to check out the Northside neighborhood house or the not so silent auction Take some time and really look into that. That is a wonderful organization that we are tied to um, They do a lot of good in the community and they have been here for I want to say right around 100 years But you know, this is a chance that we get as a company to volunteer our time to donate some of our products to really support a important cause here in Chattanooga and the surrounding areas. So this is the meat of what I wanna talk about. You know, using volunteering to uh, develop your brand. Um, you know, how can you do this the right way? How can you do this the wrong way? There is a thin line there. You know, you don't wanna go off and volunteer at one organization Monday and a different one Tuesday and a separate one Wednesday and something else Thursday, you know, Friday, Saturday, you go off and get drunk and then Sunday you're making waffles. You know, you're looking for the right way to do this. Um, and it's also a really great way to develop who you are as an individual and who your business is. So if you are an individual and you are looking to really grow who you are and develop who you are so you can take your skills anywhere, you need to know what your personal brand is. You know, are you a avid reader and teacher and bird watcher and you really love children? You know, how can you take that personal, those personal passions roll them into one and develop your personal brand around that so that you as an individual can be a stronger, you know, and then with your business, what can you do as far as a business to develop your business's brand? Uh, with Puckets, we have three pillars that we're formed on and those pillars are education, children, and first responders. So when we're doing volunteer activities, our owners and our upper management and management at each individual store. We like to focus our volunteer activities around those three pillars. So you will find us doing different activities for children. One of the big organizations we like to support is the Boys and Girls Club. So by supporting the Boys and Girls Club and going to the Boys and Girls Club and spending time, our time working there and doing fundraisers for them, people in the community get to see us and say, oh, wow, you know, Puckett's really cares about the children in the community. They, they really wanna see these children grow up and have a better opportunity at life. Because unfortunately, not everyone is given that. Um, 
you know, other things you'll find us supporting is we do work with the Children's Creative Discovery Museum here in town. Uh, we do work with the Northside Neighborhood House, like I mentioned earlier. You know, other organizations that we support are the Kidney Foundation. You know, it gives us a chance as a business to show through our volunteering efforts that we love the community we're in and we wanna support the community that we're in. We're not just here to make a buck. You know, we're here to uh, show some love to the people who've come in our doors and even the people who haven't come in our doors. And that's important as a business because the more inclusive you can be, the more supporting you can be of your community, the stronger that community is gonna be. And you know, we'll bounce back to that and go back to your personal brand development. For myself, I'm an event sales manager. So I am actually on the Greater Chattanooga Hospitality and Tourism Association's board. Um, I also serve in Pigeon Forge on another board. And uh, by volunteering my time to be on these boards and in these committees, I am developing myself and showing that as an individual, I care about the community I'm involved in and I wanna be able to find effective ways to help it grow. So again, volunteering that time to grow both my personal brand and also grow my company's brand. When you're doing this, you want to find the right causes. You know, you don't want to be a, a cause jumper. You don't want to uh, support 50 bazillion different causes. Um, you know, you need to narrow it down. What are you passionate about? What really, really, what's something you just love that you want to uh, put the time and effort and energy into and really kind of see blossom? Um, so it's important you find the right cause. It's important for your company, your business to find the right cause. You know, as a business, you don't want to go out and support something that doesn't align with your company's culture. And then when you're volunteering, you want to volunteer mindfully. You don't, you know, volunteering takes time. Volunteering is a commitment. You don't want to go into something blindly and then realize that you don't have the time, you don't have the energy, you don't have the resources to dedicate to that. You want to be able to take your time volunteering and really commit to that. And so it's important when you're looking at different causes to support different groups that you want to volunteer with that you really really do your research before you make a big commitment you know something may only be a couple of months long but it may take four days of every week for two months do you have that time do you want to make that time you know the worst thing that you could possibly do is say you know i'm going to come and i'm going to volunteer and i'm going to be a volunteer soccer coach for the y and halfway through the season, you back out. You've let the YMCA organization down, you've let yourself down, you let those kids down, those families down, and it's not a good representation of who you are. So when you're considering volunteering, be mindful of the time it's gonna take, the time it's gonna require for you to uh, volunteer and do so well. You know, it's a dedication thing. Uh, a podcast I was listening to recently was actually where I got the idea for this topic and it's through the BNI organization. And for those of you that aren't familiar, BNI is Business Networking International and it is a global community of different business networkers. And the CEO, Dr. Ivan Meisner, actually did a podcast on volunteering as a marketing tool and a brand development tool. And it really piqued my interest. And one of the things he really went into was the volunteering mindfully part. And he was very consistent in repeating the fact that before you make that commitment, do your research. You know, go and talk to people who have volunteered with the organization before. Go and to a few of their meetings, see what it entails, meet some of the people that are there. 
you know, it may be something that you are true, you feel that you're truly passionate about, but once you start looking into it more, it's not going to fit, may not be exactly what you thought it was. It may not develop you and your personal brand in the way you wanted it to, or it may not be a good match for the business that you're representing. So be sure to do your research when you're looking into those volunteer organizations. Uh, the way that we with Puckets actually got involved with Boys and Girls Club and the reason we do so much with them and the way it aligns with our pillars and our culture as a company is that our owner was attributes the Boys and Girls Club and being a member at the Boys and Girls Club to his success. He says countless times if it had not been for the Boys and Girls Club and the volunteers who were there and the people who invested in him when he was a child, he would not be where he was today. He would actually probably be an alcoholic and really struggling with some addiction problems. Um, he came from a very broken family and uh, he uh, was lucky enough to get involved as a child in the Boys and Girls Club and be put on the right path. And now he owns A Marshall Hospitality, which is our parent company. And because of that connection that he had as a child, he loves to use his platform as a successful businessman to give back. And he volunteers his time. We do fundraisers. So you need to find something in that realm, something that has really personally affected you to volunteer for so you can give back to them and develop who you are. And uh, while you're looking into these organizations, while you're volunteering your time while you're working with these groups, you need to let the brand development part of this occur very organically. You don't need to be busting down the doors of wherever you're going, wearing, you know, shirts that say pockets or shirts that say Gracie Burnett on the front and hats and handing out your keychains and your memorabilia. You know, that's too forced. It doesn't let anybody see that you're there for the right reasons. Go in, be sincere with what you're doing. People are going to ask you, hey, who are you? Hey, where'd you come from? Hey, did you go to school? Did you go to college? If not, how'd you end up here? What are you doing for a living? Do you have a trade? People are going to want to get to know you. As people get to know you, they will find out who you work for if you work for a company, if you're self-employed, you know, what are you passionate about? We see you're passionate about the cause you're supporting, but are you passionate about other things other than just your work or yourself or the group that you're there with? You need to let that brand development, that marketing aspect of it happen naturally. People are gonna see if you show up regularly, if you show up on time, if you really put your heart and soul into your volunteering efforts, people are gonna notice. People are gonna notice when you care. And from that, that's where you're really going to see the marketing part of it take place, the brand development part of it take place. Because people are gonna recognize, hey, there's that Gracie girl, you know, she's been coming regularly for over a year and, you know, she works down at the road at Puckett's. Why don't we go have lunch there? We've never been. That's how it all ties together is people are going to recognize you as long as you're consistent, as long as you show that you truly care, they're going to recognize that and they're going to want to support you in your efforts as well. That's where, that's the whole picture. That's where it creates a stronger community. That's where it creates that marketing aspect without being brash about it. You don't want to be in people's faces. You don't want it to come off as I am only here to try to make an extra buck for somebody else. I'm here because I was forced to be here. 
that's ugly. No better way to put it. It's ugly. No one wants to see it. If you go out there and you start taking advantage of this, just, just don't, just don't. Um, there's enough ugly in the world. We need more caring individuals out there. We need more people showing support for one another. So be mindful with your volunteering. Uh, find those causes that are important to you, that are important to the company that you're representing. And find ways to help your business grow by volunteering through those organizations. You will see over years, and then it'll probably take years, you'll see over the years that people will start supporting who you are and who your company is. Um, the last thing I want to end with is, so we're gonna do a quick little word cloud. Again, you can text your answers in or you can send your answers in through the link here at the top. And I just wanna get an idea, you know, what are some groups and causes that you, could you, that you could use this to support? Um, you know, for me, my answers could be Boys and Girls Club, uh, Northside Neighborhood House, Greater Chattanooga Hospitality and Tourism Association. Where are those areas that you would ideally like to volunteer and use it mindfully to grow who you are? Oh, I love that one. I love McKinney Animal Shelter. I love the Humane Society. Uh, love my dog. Everything like that is very important to me. I love to see Northside Neighborhood House on there. Girls Incorporated. You know, I've not had a chance to check that one out. I would love to though. They're, uh, Simpa, that's a good one. United Way is always a wonderful one. I know that they've really been doing a lot to try to focus on Chattanooga or Chattanoogans that have actually been affected by COVID. The Bethlehem Center, we have done some work with them in the past. They are a wonderful, another wonderful organization here in town. I love to see all of these ideas, guys. Uh, this is wonderful. So as you're continuing to send them in, keep sending them to me. I uh, love to see this coming up. Just remember that if you spend your time with these organizations, you know, do so with love, do so with care, do so with compassion. Let them see that energy that you have. And remember that you're not in this for yourself. You're in this for the people that are there. The people that are, the people, the animals are, they are needing that support. They are needing that love. They are needing some type of security. And you are that security for that organization as a volunteer. And as people see you loving on others and showing your support, they will want to get to know more about you as an individual. They're gonna to wanna to get to know more about you as a business person and how can they support you in your growth and your development. All right, so just remember, always be mindful with where you're going, who you're representing. You know, are you representing yourself? Or are you representing that organization? You know, your business, organizations. It's, it's important to create the right outlook, the right image. You don't necessarily want to go out there and uh, create the wrong idea. You don't want people to look at you the wrong way. They don't want you to think of your organization the wrong way because this is something that could easily backfire if you're not careful. 
So do it mindfully, let that growth happen organically and uh, the benefits for both yourself as an individual, your company and your community are gonna be boundless. So I'm actually gonna stop our screen share now. Thank you for participating in our poll. And Austin, if it's cool with you, go ahead, open up for some Q&A if anybody has anything. Would love to hear for, from some of the individuals. Absolutely, I hope that y'all can see me now and I'm back. Um, Gracie, thank, first off, I have to say thank you. Um, You're very welcome. For being our first presenter and then also just, that was amazing. I uh, love to volunteer and try and get out as much as I can and I know that at times, I can't always get, as much, get out as much as I want to, um, but hearing, you know, just support, you know, supporting your, your personal brand, you know, even while you're volunteering and you're, you know, not only your organization, but your personal, it's just really important. I just appreciate those awesome words. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, as Grace has said, love to take some questions if there are any. Um, feel free to use the Q&A button. Um, let's see. That is located at the bottom of your screen, if you have any. And I don't see any popping up yet, but. I don't either. <laughs> maybe in a couple seconds, who knows? Or maybe you just did that amazing of a job. Maybe, <laughs> or I just really confused everybody and they don't know where to start. <laughs> <clears throat> Had to stop my little timer. I wanted to make sure I didn't go overboard with anything. Uh, <laughs> you know, you still have plenty of time. Awesome. Here we go. So once you picked an organization, logistically, how do you get started? Who should you connect with in an organization? That's a great, wonderful question. Um, and with most of your organizations, you are going to find that there is somebody working there that is a volunteer coordinator. It may not be that exact title that they hold, but there will be somebody that is actually a paid employee with that group whose sole purpose it is to find volunteers and to connect volunteers where they're needed most. I know that with the Humane Society, they've got somebody there and all you do is give them a call, go to visit, you can usually look the individual up online. If not, just give them a quick phone call. Let them know you're interested in volunteering. They'll put you in contact with their volunteer coordinator or whoever handles all of the volunteer efforts. And let them know up front, how much time do you have to volunteer? What are you looking for? Are you wanting to do one day a week? Are you wanting to do one day a month? Do you have two or three hours to give when you're there? Do you have a whole day to give when you're there? It's important when you're speaking with the person at the organization to let them know what you're able to commit to up front. So when you're looking for those groups, you know, look for that volunteer coordinator. That would be your go-to person to get started. I think that's awesome to kind of, um... You know, if it's okay if to support that, I think that that's, um, or to continue with what you're saying, I think that's really important, you know, especially whenever it's a volunteer coordinator, because usually it's somebody within that general title. Um, and like you said, calling, you know, even if it's just the front desk and you're just saying, hey, I'm interested in volunteering, they will know exactly who to get you to. Yes. Given times, a lot of people don't always like to call. And so even if it's going online and like you said, you know, just Google it and see, you um, you know, who pops up within that organization that you can um, reach out to. I know that, you know, especially like we have so many volunteer opportunities within Chattanooga. We're very, um, 
we have no lack of volunteer opportunities and nonprofit organizations that are offering those opportunities. And so it's, you know, even if it's connecting with um, the challenge, excuse me, my own organization, the Chattanooga Chamber, and seeing, you know, we're very connected within the community and seeing how, you know, you can volunteer through the Chattanooga Chamber where you want to get placed. Um, same with United Way, very heavily involved in the community around uh, volunteering as well. And so they may have those connections with Habitat for Humanity, SEMPA, all those other organizations that you mentioned, um, you know, between the two organizations, I know that they can connect you with whomever you need to. Um, so I think that's a great one. Uh, Ryan added, United Way has that. Yep, that's why I mentioned United Way. They have iHelpChattanooga.org website to find opportunities. Correct. They actually, I've used them personally, and they'll even, um, they'll even, can, like, you'll fill out a little paper and they actually will help to connect you based on your needs. Yeah. And you know, one of the nice, one of the, it's like a double-edged sword. It's a nice thing, but it's also a sad thing to see is there is a huge need for volunteers in almost every organization. You know, it's an area, volunteers are needed everywhere and there's a shortage of it. You know, people don't, people think they don't have time or people don't want to dedicate the time that is needed. So that's why it's important to make sure if you're gonna volunteer for one of these places, you need to make that commitment and stick to it. You know, they really need those help, that help that you're gonna offer. And you know, we're also, Tennessee, we're the volunteer state. We volunteer for everything constantly. Um, a good example of this is my house was one of the ones hit with the tornadoes on Easter Sunday. And uh, we had just people from Puckets that I work with every day showed up in droves to help cut trees and haul stuff down to the curb. And that wasn't through an organization. That was just through uh, people wanting to volunteer and help somebody else out. Yep. That's definitely one thing that I love about Chanuga is just our, our love to volunteer and our love to help. Um, yes. I think that's really, you know, it's, it's amazing. And one of the things that personally, you know, attracted me to Chattanooga um, whenever I decided to move here. So I love that. Yeah. It's wonderful to see a community that just really ties together. Mm -hmm. And thank you again, uh, Ryan, who's joining us, that uh, mentioned iHelpChannel.org as part of United Way. Um, that is amazing, you know, an amazing, like I said, very easy way to get connected, um, you know, like I said, to they'll ask you the questions to understand what your interests are, and then they'll, you know, play kind of like matchmaker and, you know, send you opportunities that there may be that are related to what you like and your, and your availability and so forth. So it's a great, um, great way to help. Let's see if we have any other questions. How did you get involved, Gracie, with the organizations that um, you volunteered with? So uh, with the uh, Hospitality and Tourism Association, I actually, when I was in college, worked at one of the area hotels here downtown and really saw how much of Chattanooga's economy is focused and centered around tourism. And once I graduated college and moved around a bit with my husband for his work and landed back in Chattanooga, I wanted to find a way to be able to improve the tourism indus industry in Chattanooga. And so through connections with Puckets and connections at that hotel that I actually worked at with Andrea, um, I was able to get nominated to be on the board with them. Uh, some of the other organizations with Northside Neighborhood House, 
that is strictly one that we that I support through work. I uh, love them. They came to us asking for some donations for one of their not so silent auction events. Yeah. And at that event, I learned about the group and who they were and everything that they do. And they have been wonderful partners with us. Uh, we've supported them in multiple events throughout the year and they have in turn offered support for some of our serving staff. And then Kidney Foundation actually materialized through one of the general managers that's now in Pigeon Forge. When he was here in Chattanooga, he's actually a kidney transplant recipient. And the Kidney Foundation here in Chattanooga is very near and dear to him. So we do a lot as far as fundraising and volunteering just my personal time. So that's a blended one between work and personal uh, to support the Kidney Foundation with the Dancing with the Stars and then their Kidney Cup and some of their other organizations and fundraising that they do. That's amazing. Something that I've read recently is actually how virtual volunteering is even growing, which I thought was an interesting concept of, you know, we always relate volunteering to more in person, um, whether that be, you know, for volunteering on a board. I mean, yes, those can be more virtual, but in the, you know, still real aspect, we're still volunteering in person in some capacity, whether that's, you know, helping somewhere or supporting something in person. Um, but I've been reading a lot more about like how virtual volunteering, especially given um, our current climate, you know, how even doing stuff like editing documents and websites or translating, you know, things over the phone or, um, you know, especially people just needing that someone to talk to, you know, just virtual volunteering just is continuing to grow as well. And so if it's, I think that, you know, something that's important as well is if you're not always able to volunteer in person, because you may ask yourself, oh, I don't, you know, I don't really think that I have the time to volunteer because that's always, you know, a, an important topic that comes up too is, you know, oh, I don't always have the time. And so I think that even if it's helping, you know, at your house virtually or over the phone, you know, it's, it's still a way of giving and supporting your community. And so I think that, you know, even considering those aspects is important too. I would actually love to look into virtual volunteering. It's not something I've really taken the time to look into or even thought of. And I think with us moving to more of a digital platform and a digital world, you know, it's definitely going to be an area to grow and, um, you know, really be able to, on your time, kind of find the way to volunteer and support those organizations. Yeah. And the great thing too is even if you don't always have enough time, you know, things may change as life progresses. And if it's, mm -hmm. you know, you can't always help out every, you know, on a monthly basis, even if it's just a one-off event, you know, supporting an organization that you believe in and want to support with just those one-off events, like a fundraiser, um, or, you know, if they ever have like a, a day event, you know, or a marathon. Yeah. I mean, we have tons of marathons. So those are great ways to also, you know, always volunteer and get involved. And, and they are, and those are, like you said, for the ones who can't make a huge commitment as far as, you know, regularly being at a meeting or events or fundraisers, you know, those ones like the March of Dimes, that mm -hmm. is a great cause to support. That is a great way to, uh, show your love for the community and it's a one and done you know yep. you don't have to make a huge commitment for that so there are definitely ways to fit the volunteering into your schedule into your life and still make an impact on your community yep. and i have um and even if it's not one of those i actually have like one of my best friends she's a graphic designer and so her way of 
helping her organization is through, um, you know, the marketing and the graphic design work. You know, she does a lot of it for those for a couple organizations, and that's her way of giving. Yes, it's something that she does every single day, but it's still something that she can use to support those organizations um, that she loves so much and wants to you know, use that through volunteering too. So think about it from that aspect of what are your strengths as well? Um, you know, Grace, I know you touched on that. And so definitely thinking about your strengths that you have to offer and how those can also you know, help to better your community through volunteering. And if an organization, um, I mean, you know, organizations always need to be uh, volunteer groups and organizations always need to be diverse as well. And so thinking about all those different industries, you know, as we're, for example, you know, I'm thinking about my boards and my volunteer opportunities within, you know, um, programs that I oversee. And so, you know, think about that diversity and inclusion piece and making sure that I have people from different backgrounds, not just racially, but also from different varying industries and making sure that, you know, we are a true collective of our community. And so, you know, not only am I, but also other um, people that are looking to volunteer, you know, they're making sure that they're purposeful with that. Um, and so, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to people and reach out to organizations and you know whenever you're at networking events ask people you know who they who they volunteer with i mean that's that's a great one you know especially your friends just ask them hey who do you volunteer with or you know things like that like and then you learn like and like we discussed there's so many organizations in chattanooga to volunteer with that you may not know about and so asking those questions of your friends and your family is is a great place to start too it is it is and uh, you know, you were talking about your friend that does the uh, graphic design work. You know, that's a good example of her being able to use her personal brand and who she is and still give back to that community. And, you know, you don't have to go with a huge organization. It can be more of a grassroots movement. You know, we have a server here and I want to say she was had a write up in either the Times or maybe it was just the UTC newspaper, but she's a server here and her name's Elise Taylor. And she has this grassroots movement that she has just started in her apartment where she takes extra food that she has left over and goes out onto the streets of Chattanooga on Tuesday nights and just passes out sandwiches to homeless people who need them. Was she featured? She was. Okay, I was like, this name sounds familiar. She it was featured. Inspired me whenever I yes. saw that she was, um, she was having like sandwich parties, correct? So it started with on, she would do this thing called Pancake Tuesday and she would just invite anybody over to her apartment. She would cook up a bunch of pancakes and then afterwards, any of the food that was left over and she just had a bunch of sandwich stuff like PB and J. It's not even anything fancy. She'd make a bunch of sandwiches and anybody that hung around, she would just take them out and they would just pass out food. And yeah. I have gone with her on one occasion and it is truly humbling to see. So again, you don't have, it doesn't have to be a huge organization. It can be something more grassroots, just like that. You know, showing the community that you care you know you may not be able to uh, spend a lot of money or you may not have a lot of time to give but i see my community and i see my community's needs what can i do to make my community a better place yep so shifting to another thought um you know especially given this time um with people being laid off and furloughed and then thinking about the time that they do have now to then also be an opportunity whenever you know you're looking at getting your foot in the door at a company you know i mean selfishly yes like you you know you may want to get in with that company but is volunteering a way to start that conversation through volunteering with that company and organization it very, um, yeah it very much can be a way um Again, that's where you need to be very mindful in what you're doing. You don't need to see a company that makes a bunch of money because, you know, let's, let's not beat around the bush. Some of these organizations make millions of dollars through mm -hmm. their fundraising efforts, but you don't need to see a company that makes a lot of money and think, oh man, I could work my way in there and get up, you know, climb that ladder. You need to find those that group that you're really passionate about 
and think, I would love to work there one day, but I'm first going to dedicate my time in my volunteering efforts with them. Because when you start volunteering, they may not have an opening. Yeah. But if you're dedicated to mm -hmm. what you're doing, if you show the consistency, if they see that compassion, you know, they're going to start to talk to you. They're going to get to know you as an individual and it could possibly develop into, man, we want to have you here every day. Let's bring you on board. But again, you need to be, that's where you need to be very careful with what you're doing. You don't need to do it with a malicious mindset. You need to do it with a very caring and compassionate mindset. And in the back of your mind thinking, maybe this will possibly grow into something. And that's kind of the win-win scenario if it does. That's wonderful. And I, I kind of got that question from my own personal life of yeah. um, my previous life. The company that I worked for was heavily involved with the chamber and, um, you know, was out networking and supporting the chamber and um, volunteering. And then it grew to, um, you know, be, you know somebody and then you know you build that relationship and you build that trust and then um you know one thing led to another of opportunities and so it's you know yep. it's um yeah it's definitely something that can it can ha that can happen and yeah. it's when that connection is made it's probably one of the best fits you will find with an employee because you know that that employee really cares and is really there for the right reasons. Mm. That's awesome. We have just four more minutes. If anybody else had any other questions that they wanted to ask, um, Gracie, I cannot thank you enough for joining well, us. I appreciate the opportunity, Austin. I've really been looking forward to this. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say you have done such a fantastic job of pulling this all together for it to go from being something that was going to be in person to, uh, you know what, guys, we're going to make this a Zoom thing and we're going to make it happen. <laughs> You've been wonderful. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> I have a great team here to help support too. So that That's means a huge difference. It really yeah. does. And my volunteers as well. That there is you go. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> exactly right. Any last minute questions out there, guys? And if you don't want to ask anything on here, I think Austin, correct me if I'm wrong, but will our contact information be provided? Yes, ma'am. Feel free to shoot me an email. I have my phone with me and access to my email 24 seven. Wonder that's the wonderful part of being a event sales manager is events never sleep. And I have to answer phone calls and emails all the time. So please, if you have anything else, or if you think of anything in the next few days, don't hesitate to reach out and just shoot me a quick email, phone call, whatever would work best for you. Uh -huh. So you mentioned that you're on a couple boards. Yeah. Are there any questions that you ask whenever you join a board that um, that you feel are of importance? For example, like whenever I've joined boards, I've always asked if there's like a financial obligation. I always ask financial obligation because with boards, they uh, some do, some don't, but they sometimes have that monetary commitment. It's important to make sure that that's something that you can, that you can afford. You know, everybody's at a different walk in life and sometimes you just can't afford that. Um, another question I always ask is what is your attendance policy? You know, with me splitting between two cities, I need to make sure that I'm not going to be penalized or it's not going to be looked down upon if I have to miss a few meetings because I can't 
I've already got a commitment somewhere else. So, um, and then I always like to ask, you know, what is your board's actual involvement? Um, I was presented with the opportunity of being part of a board in Pigeon Forge for the Smoky Mountain Clinic up there, and they do wonderful work. Uh, but the board is so heavily involved in everything that I had to unfortunately turn that opportunity down because they oversee everything. And it is a free clinic for individuals in that area who can't afford medical care. And so it's very heavily regulated by the board. And I just, it was something I could not dedicate the time to. Yeah. So, you know, you gotta, you need to ask those important questions. You know, is there monetary? What is your uh, either attendance policy or how often do you meet? And, you know, the board's involvement. Yeah. Morning. Morning. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting ready for a Let's management meeting. <laughs> awesome. Well, guys, um, I want to, you know, thank you again, Gracie, for joining us today. Um, that means so much. Thank you, Austin. And thank you to everybody who joined as well. It was wonderful to see participation. And I really, really hope you got something from this.